Hello, okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it can actually be to migrate your extension from Manifest version two to Manifest version three with the new updates to Chrome. So as you may have seen in a previous video on this channel, I showed a introduction to building Chrome extensions with four simple extensions. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually update all of these to Manifest version three. So there's a link in the description to the first video and the actual files that were used. And there's also a link to see the updated files as well. So anyway, let's jump straight into the code and have a look at what the changes are. So here is my uh, list of extensions just here. So I've got them for manifest version three and the originals in manifest version two. Now the first one here is just a simple extension that uses a background page to show content on a page. So let's just select this one first for manifest version two so we can see what this actually is supposed to do. So what this does when you load a web page is waiting for a response from the background page to then change the entire contents of whatever this page is with this response here. So as you can see here, it just says this is a response. Now the way this works in manifest version two is we use a background page. This is all changed to service workers. So let's have a quick look at the code for this first example and see what you actually need to change. Okay, so here is Atom. On the right hand side here, you can see what it looks like for manifest version two. So the main uh, difference here is we have a background page and we have manifest version two. So if you look across to option three here, all that really changes is we just say version three instead of two, and then we remove page and persistent and switch this to service worker. And instead of calling our background HTML file, we call our background JS file directly. Now, if we open up what the background HTML actually used to be um, just here, you can see all this actually did anyway was called background.js. So we don't need this file anymore for manifest version two or for manifest version three. So if you look down here, you can just see all we do is call this file straight away. Um, so which makes it a lot smoother, it's more streamlined and it's actually you know faster to make. So that's how you can change the first one. Everything else works exactly the same. Now, sometimes if you are calling in, say you want multiple JavaScript files in that uh, service worker, you can import them but you know, at the moment, that's not really uh, what we're talking about here. If you wanna know how to do that though, just drop a comment and I can show you an example. Um, but now let's move on to the next one. So that was background message. The next example is a content script. So let's go and load this one over here. So we'll first load the manifest version two version just so you can see what this does. Now what this does, if you go on to uh, BBC Sport, it's really specific, only works on one site. It will just change whatever the main headline is here to be this new headline and summary text. So it just looks for that one domain and changes that. Now for manifest version three, if we switch this and use the new one, so content script, and let's go to that website again. So we refresh this, you can see it still works. Now the only changes that we've done here, it's really, really, really simple. Instead of it being manifest three, I mean, instead of it being manifest two, it's now manifest three. That's the only change we have to make. All the other files work exactly the same. It's just a simple content script. So that's all we need to change for this one. Now let's have a look at our new tab extension. Okay, so here's our new tab extension. So each time you open a new tab, it just shows this uh, HTML file that's changed to have this music that you can play. Now, all that we need to do to get this to work on manifest version is three, I'll just switch across here, is we change the uh, version number. So exactly the same as the content script, that's the only change we need to make. So this is nice and easy. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna show you a pop-up extension where there's a couple more parts that we actually have to change here. Okay, so here is our pop-up extension we've loaded here. So all we need to do is click over here and you can see there's this pop-out, which very similar to our new tab extension. I've tried to keep these really simple. It just shows this area here and you can then play music um, through the pop-out. Now, if we look at the manifest for this, there's a couple of parts that have changed. So as you can see here for manifest version two, we were using browser action to add this pop-out into the corner. For manifest version three, obviously we change um, two to three, and then we change this to just action. So this is a more unified um, way of actually setting things up within your manifest file. So that is all the changes you need to make um, for these examples here. Now, obviously these are really simple examples, but it shows that migrating your extension shouldn't necessarily be difficult. Most of the time, and you can even see this with the official uh, you know, documentation from Google as well, that most changes should just be in your manifest file. 
Now, as I mentioned, there can be certain things in terms of working with service workers that are slightly different. So you need to make sure you're using things like fetch, not um, XML, HTTP requests, you know, sort of things like this. Um, and you also, when you're importing files, there's a special way you do this. So if I just use one of these uh, background scripts, or I got this one here, say I wanted to import code here. And another thing as well, actually, there at the moment, um, at the time of recording, there's very limited ways of actually adding error checking into your service workers. So it helps to add everything inside a try block like this. So you can catch your error down here and then just say error and then have your error like this or like that. So you can show your error message or you can do it like that um, because otherwise it, any slight error could then cause the whole extension not to run. And then if you want to import, say you've got a I wanted to import my content script, not that you would, but I had a script like that. I can just say self import scripts and then pass in the actual location of that. So in this case, it'll be content script like that. Um, and that means you can actually use that file over here. Now, because you can't call in remote code um, or remote scripts anymore, you can still use like uh, JSON files or get sort of API requests that you might need, but you can't call in the whole external JavaScript file so say you want to use something like Firebase, make sure you download those files from Firebase and then call them in remotely like this, or call them in locally like this. I'm using self import scripts. Um, and make sure again, you use these try blocks so it can help catch any errors um, like that. Um, but again, most things should be quite simple. It's mainly around the actual parts of the Chrome API that you're using. Most things are still the same. Um, it's just a few subtle things that you can see in my um, recent videos as well around these changes. Um, but the majority of the changes you would need to make will be, you know, mostly around the manifest file. So that does help to keep it a lot easier. But yeah, there normally is uh, decent error reporting when it comes to the manifest file. You normally get a, a little alert that will appear and you can say try again. And it should try and narrow down where this error will come from. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was useful um, in terms of actually updating your extensions to Manifest version three. If you've got any questions, just drop a comment, let me know and I'll try and help. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.